Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number uh, 29. So, we have been discussing about the Kepler's equation. So, uh, there remains one problem to be done uh, furthermore. So, we will do that, but let us start with the three body problem. In the three body problem, uh, if you remember, we have already discussed this two body problem, but in that, uh, I did not. Uh, discuss about what are the forces acting uh, on the system. See, in the case of uh, a two body problem, it is possible that if your body is finite in size. So, the basic gravitational term that you are taking that is not the only term available. This, there may be some extra, there are some extra terms also and I, as I told you there are infinite number of terms related to gravity. Similarly, in the case of, uh, but if we consider only two particles, so safely we can describe it by the inverse square law and our job is done. But that is not the case when the body is little oblate and also then uh, uh, mass is distributed over uh, like this. So, you can consider that these are the different elementary masses and then how it will act on some other body which is also finite in size. So, uh, we will come to this problem, but not right now. Uh, at this stage, we are going to consider that this, uh, these are particles and thereafter. Uh, so, uh, what we are assuming that uh, we have this uh, x, y, z reference frame and in this we will have different particles of different masses and how they are going to interact with themselves and what will be the consequent motion. And in the case of the two body system or the two body problem, which we have indeed written for the two particle system, we have observed that we can only get the 10 constants. And what we have solved, either we can solve it for the um, relative motion uh, of one particle with respect to the other or either if the one particle is massive like earth another particle is satellite. So, this is earth and say this is satellite. So, well in this case because the center of mass is uh, as we know for this uh, the system um, uh, of particles moving uh, under mutual gravitational acceleration, it is free from the external force and therefore, center of mass will not accelerate. Okay. So, basically it moves with a constant velocity. So, given the initial uh, position and velocity, you can always transfer the center of mass to the center of the main body or the uh, primary body and uh, in the case uh, as here in this case, the, we, we are taking the satellite. So, the safely your center of mass can be centered here in this place and thereafter you get just three differential equations, second order differential equation in x, y and z coordinates and you can solve. That means, you are getting a total of six constants. And this six constants already we have identified A E i capital omega, small omega and theta and uh, this depends on as the t varies, so this varies. So, these are the three six parameters of the orbit. Now, the important part is that if this satellite is not a particle, but this is also of finite size like this. So, we have two system one here, another one here, we have the coordinate system here, one big massive uh, body here, another massive body here. So, in that case we get two equations, vector equations. So, for, and that vector equation, the first vector equation will give us six constants and the second vector also equation gives 
six constants. So total of twelve constants we got, and out of these twelve constants, only ten we were able to identify, and rest two we are not able to identify. That means only these are the ten constants available to us. The in a close what we are looking for, we are looking for a closed form solution. Okay. Obviously, as I told you that uh, if the initial values are given, you can always integrate the equation of motion and you can get the future position. So you know the how the um, system of uh, particle it's evolving. But the closed form solution, like uh, the cl closed form solution, we have written r equal to l by one plus e cos theta for the conic section. We have derived for the two particle system. Okay. The motion of the other particle with respect to the uh, first second particle with respect to the first one. So this we got a closed form solution. But this we got for a uh, relative motion, one particle with respect to other. In the case we have the one satellite, a small satellite, and I have the Earth. So uh, safely I can assume that the center of mass is lying at the center of the Earth, and thereafter we can write the equation of motion. Because the, uh, with the initial condition, your center of mass velocity will be known, velocity and position, and that can be transferred to the uh, center of the Earth, and thereafter you can work with only six constants. So those six constants are identified here in this place. The same thing also it's applicable to the three-body system, but here are the n-body system, which we uh, in the Celestial mechanics, or in the basic me mechanics, we call the n-particle system. So, n-particle system, there is no more than three, three or more more than three uh, particle system. We do not have any closed form solution. So, we can only under some restricted condition we can get certain solution to this analytical solution or the analytical closed form solution. So, this is what we are going to learn here. So for our first objective is to here get the equation of motion equations of motion of n particle system or n body system. We are assuming that the whole mass is concentrated at the at a point, only under this, this will be valid. Okay. So, for finite body, especially in the case of a satellite. The following forces will be acting on this satellite. One is a spherical. gravitational acceleration which all of you know so this is especially valid for the satellite gravitational forces due to different planets. Remember that in a short run, this term will not be of any importance, but if you are looking for a longer time, you are looking for a mission, okay, where over a longer period of time, your orbit will change because of the perturbation from other planets. So then this becomes a 
uh, this becomes an important factor then we have non spherical gravitational acceleration due to primary body that means if your planet is not spherical but uh, oblate shaped okay here is your satellite so see the if the planet is like this the spherical so it's a different issue only the first one will be act acting which is called the gravitational acceleration in the case this gets oblate so this will create an infinite number of terms in the on the gravitational uh, uh, in the equation for gravitational acceleration gravitational acceleration it's a vector okay so you will get infinite number of terms in that and that to assuming that this is of uniform density if you do not assume this to be of uniform density the situation is much more complex then there are one more term is this is called the indirect oblation perturbation this arises due to the non spherical shape of other planets non spherical shape of other planets affect the so th this arises due to non spherical shape of the other planets affecting the acceleration of of the primary body that means in the case of say uh, here is the earth and there is one jupiter okay big in size and if non sphericity is taken into account or any other planet you consider if it's a non spherical so this is going to also affect acceleration already i have told that here in this case this is the non spherical part of the earth it's affecting the satellite similarly the non spherical part of this also it will affect the main planet around which your satellite is moving so this term we are calling as the indirect oblation perturbation term then we have uh, other terms like the magnetic forces acting on the satellite this is because of the earth's magnetic field geomagnetic field acting on the satellite this is the geomagnetic field then the aerodynamic forces aerodynamic force solar radiation term okay so for
aerodynamic force this especially needs mention as you know for the ellipse we write it like this a specific energy so uh, aerodynamic force this is a dissipative term okay that means uh, you see in the case of your car uh, it's a uh, moving on the road so it's a uh, facing the drive similarly in the uh, while the satellite is moving in the space around the earth so in the low at, uh, lower earth orbit low earth orbit say 300 km especially at 250 km where the satellite is launched so 250 km onwards up to 2000 km we can consider this to be a low earth orbit but the at higher altitude this becomes the aerodynamic effect becomes a small if you consider 250 km it's a very strong here in this case very strong at 7 600 700 km still it remains appreciable so here in this case there are small particles atoms others are present ions electrons so uh, basically uh, this is your atmosphere is rarefied here okay so uh, while it passes through the atmosphere if it is moving in the atmosphere so just as a car fills the drag the same way the your satellite also fills the drag though this magnitude is quite small it's a very very small as compared to what we get in the case of a car so uh, this uh, so uh, as you know that if you leave the accelerator in the car uh, you uh, remove the your uh, right foot uh, from the accelerator so that means you are no more uh, giving in the input power so in that case whatever the velocity is there car will slowly uh, start decelerating only some uh, this idle power the idle power from the engine will be uh, given as the input so uh, this if car start decelerating the same way this also the satellite also decelerates so as a result of that that means it's a losing energy so e prime which is written as uh, v square divided by 2 minus mu by r so this e prime the total energy of the system or the satellite it will dissipate so if this goes down what will happen so if the left hand term it's a decreasing okay so this indicates that e will decrease and thereby you can see that the right hand say this side is positive for the ellipse a is this is also positive and then this uh, start decreasing so this means this becomes more and more negative more and more negative and therefore as a result of your power dissipation in this uh, uh, total energy dissipation of the uh, not power energy dissipation of the satellite it's a semi major axis will swing okay so a will shrink so th this is has a very simple connotation see here uh, if your satellite is like this okay and say this uh, orbit is now little elliptic and it's uh, going like this it's uh, on this side it's a uh, smaller and this side it's a little longer this is the center of the earth so if the energy decays means semi major axis will shrink so this way after certain time it will start from the beginning itself it will be decaying uh, rather than showing here i will show it here like this this orbit will decay like this the very small reduction but it will decay in the case of the you know that uh, india one shot down one satellite as an experiment uh, using a missile so uh, and it was told that and it was in the low earth orbit and it was told that those the debris created while the satellite is broken so debris is created debris is created so this debris will uh, be decaying or it will enter the atmosphere and burn out okay it will be cleaned from the space so this way it decays 
okay it's a going here on this side so it's a decaying so if it is decaying and some orbit if it start decaying like this so what does it mean slowly it will come and hit. even if it does not burn out completely it will hit the surface of the earth and the same thing is also applicable in the case of the say uh, your uh, meteorites and uh, other particles if the meteorites so of course if the it so happens that uh, the trajectory is like this so it will go and hit directly but uh, in the case of the satellite this decay it takes place in this way so for the semi major axis shrinks and uh, it will come and hit the surface of the earth or either it will get into the dense atmosphere and it will burn out because of the friction very high temperature is generated and that temperature will burn out the satellite so this aerodynamic term is very important the solar radiation pressure is also very good uh, it's a, uh, a factor uh, which is important for uh, geostationary satellite in the low earth orbit it's a not so dominant but in the geostationary orbit it's a very dominant here this is very dominant in the leo low earth orbit leo we use for low earth orbit it's a very dominant there and magnetic forces say if you have on the satellite uh, the solar panels are there on the solar panels some charges uh, get generated because of the bombardment of the ions from the uh, atmosphere or the from the uh, those coming from the uh, space and they are going to hit and if uh, so this is a basically a charge say the plus q and this is moving through the atmosphere so this will produce a force on the satellite which is given by this equation okay f equal to q times v cross b so th this way the uh, this basically a lorentz force so this also produces force on the satellite the uh, current inside the satellite then you have the uh, inside the circuitry is there inside the satellite and in, in that circuitry you have the current following there may be residual current even if something is not operating but there may be some residual current remaining so that interacts with the magnetic force to produce torque okay if it is a closed circuit so if you here in have you know that in a magnetic field if i have a coil current carrying coil so it produces a torque in a uniform magnetic field in a non uniform of course uh, uh, it will also experience force but in the uniform magnetic field uh, it will experience only torque so it depends on the size of the satellite if the size is very large and uh, this earth magnetic field uh, uh, it's a uh, something like uh, on the north side this is the south magnetic pole and the south side this is the north magnetic pole okay. so from the north side the field emits like this and it goes like this so uh, so depending on the altitude then this uh, starts decaying as you uh, gain the altitude so here you see in the case of the geostationary satellites the magnetic uh, mm, magnetic field will be negligible or magnetic field is almost absent you can write field is negligible here itself it's a very small at the in the leo orbit so they they are almost it vanishes so these are some of the issues related to the satellite so we now uh, look into the three body problem what we have been discussing about so for three body problem closed form solution 
is not possible in 1912 sand man tried to solve three body problem but got an infinite series instead of a closed form closed form solution means you are representing the equation in terms of finite number of terms okay if there are infinite number of terms so it's a not a closed form solution this is the basic concept so he tried to solve it but he got an infinite number of uh, got a solution which has infinite which was in the form of infinite series and converse much slowly slowly than the numerical ones and hence lost its importance so there is no benefit of doing that if you have to solve an infinite series say you have uh, infinite series in terms of uh, sin cosine and other things so uh, by doing that much operation you will do uh, simply by doing the numerical integration which will be much more easier and it will take uh, very uh, little amount of effort not in terms of computation or uh, but also uh, working with okay handling it so uh, so why to use then the infinite series so the, it has not been successful so three particle system or more than three particle system it cannot be solved only in the case of especially the restricted three body problem under certain conditions under certain assumption the three particle system can be solved and that to in the restricted condition as i am telling so and these are the issues which we are going to tackle and uh, this is very important uh, the three body problem very important for our further discussion of the variation of parameter which is the uh, what we term as the uh, part of general perturbation theory the special perturbation theory as i told earlier also uh, we are not going to discuss because it's a numerical method and numerical method it does not constitute part of this course okay anti unless you really implement it on the computer you are working with this there is no meaning in discussing all those things you can find it numerical methods in some standard books like the valado uh, astrodynamics by valado so uh, that book is very good in terms of many other things it's a comprehensive book you can look into that and for regarding the mathematics in astrodynamics you can look into batten okay so i have already given the list okay and another book by danvi it contains a number of problems solved uh, not unsolved problems and it's a very uh, challenging problems also so you can attempt uh, solving those problems also so danvi is also a very good book and the textbook already already i have defined by curtis so uh, you can refer to curtis and there are a number of solved problem also and unsolved problems also so that will help you build this course so in the solving this in the numerical method numerical method exist which works by so given r0 the initial position and velocity find r b by integrating unlike two body problem three body problem will not be as simple as what we have got in the kepler equation
we can get exact solution but only for some restricted cases as we will look later on so we will stop here and uh, continue in the next lecture thank you very much